George, George of the Jungle. What exactly is a homestead exemption? And how does that help me? How does it hurt me? Well, if you're a homeowner and you live in the state of Utah, this is some information that might become very, very valuable to you sometime this year. Thanks for dropping in to thecreditjungle.com. My name is George Anderson, and as everybody's aware, starting April 1st of 2020, there are a lot of people that thought that they can take a vacation from their house payment, and they've requested forbearances, and there's been a lot of fuzziness on how that might go. I mean, it's going to be added onto the back of my loan. Is it going to be on my credit report? What's going to be going on? And a lot of people might find themselves sitting down and talking with a bankruptcy attorney sometime soon, I think before the end of the year. So I want to explain how this works just a little bit. Just want to give a disclaimer that I'm not an attorney. This is not legal advice, but I do know at least 16 words of Latin, so I'm, I'm, I'm like that close. But one of the very first loans that I did in my career back in 1989 was for somebody who was purchasing a home and they were in a Chapter 13. And so I figured out how to do that. The underwriting guidelines have not changed. Uh, FHA and VA have very flexible terms and even USDA for rural housing has a little carve out for being able to do uh, a, a purchase money. But how does it affect you when you're selling your home and what type of bankruptcy does it protect and what kind does it not protect? So back in uh, last year in 2019, the state of Utah increased the homestead exemption limit to $42,000 per person or $84,000 for joint tenants. So if you own a home, you have a certain amount of your equity that's exempt from creditor claims. And we're going to just explain a little bit about what that is. And then we're going to talk about is the practical application. How does it affect you? And how does it allow you to plan for future problems and issues? And how can you get things resolved? There was an interesting provision in it this time that for 2020 and for 19 or 2021, that there's an escalator clause in there that's based on a home price index, some other things. So for, for 2020, the year that we're in right now, your single exemption is $42,700. For joint filers, it would be $85,400. So the homestead exemption is something that really only comes into play when you own a home and there's other types of property that are categorized in there. And you have to have lived in the state and you have to have acquired the property legally. So uh, again, there's some other tenants that come into play on there, but we're going to discuss a little bit on what does it mean when it's exempt. So let's just take an example here. People in Utah have accrued a lot of equity in their homes over the last several years, and not uncommon at all for somebody that maybe five years ago paid or $300,000 for a home, put maybe little to no money down on it. That home's easily worth $400,000 now. So we've got a current value of $400,000 and Let's just say that they owe, um, we can even, I'm, I'm just playing with the numbers here a little bit, but let's just say they owe $300,000, okay? That means that they have roughly about a $100,000 equity position in that home. Now, under Chapter 7, which is kind of a liquidation, that's where you have certain claims that can be discharged through the bankruptcy and some of them cannot. But anyway, your unsecured claims, you know, medical bills, credit card debt, um, Tax liens and student loans, completely different thing there. This is why you need a good bankruptcy attorney to work with you on this stuff. But your equity in your home is protected, but not 100% of it. So in this case, we have $100,000 of equity and we have joint tenants who are filing and they've got an $85,700 exemption. A Chapter 7 trustee kind of gets a little wheel of fortune that they spin when you file and it lands on a certain Chapter 7 trustee and his job is to look for assets, to try to find out, did you lie? When you filed your bankruptcy petition, are you hiding money? Are you hiding assets? And there are some tools out there that's kind of scary stuff. Even as a lender, I have a service that I subscribe to that I can literally grab a license plate off of a car and I can get the amount of information that I can get, the registered owner, the social security number, the driver's license, all kinds of stuff. Trust me, the Chapter 7 trustee, they've even got better tools available to them. But they're going to go and they're going to look and see if there's assets there that they can force liquidation, in other words, force you to sell it. Now, under this example here, they, they probably would not because 
if 400,000 is the market value at a trustee sale, might not get quite that much. Maybe they get 490. There's some legal fees and everything else. If they if they sold the home for exactly $400,000 and you owed exactly $300,000, the trustee would only get the difference between the 85,700 and the uh, and the $100,000 net. So the trustee on this example would only be getting about $14,600, okay? Um, it's unlikely that he would even get that much, but if he did, what they would do is they would take that money and they would then distribute that out to the creditor, to the creditors who had a claim in the case after the trustee takes his cut. Guess how a Chapter 7 trustee in a bankruptcy case gets paid? Yeah, he gets his cut out of the assets when he finds them and then forces them to be sold. But in this case, it's probably not going to happen. But what if the person only owed $200,000? Okay? Now there's only $200,000 owing on that. Chapter 7, good idea. Would somebody really file that? Would you want to go in by yourself and find out that, that the trustee's not going to get $14,000, but he's going to get $114,000? If you had $100,000 in medical bills, the trustee's going to go, oh, that's fine, we're just going to take the house and we're going to liquidate it and then I'm going to take that $100,000 that I have here. Now, you're going to walk away with your $85,700. You're going to have that. You do get to keep that amount of money, but what's left over goes to the trustee and after his cut, his job is to try to pay those creditors because guess what? You really weren't broke. You, you had assets and they're going to be distributed. So. The, the cool little thing about this, and I was talking with a very prominent bankruptcy attorney just recently, and I guess that there's a little bit of some ambiguity on a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. A Chapter 13 bankruptcy, typically, you could have an unlimited amount of equity, but I guess there's some provisions in there based on income, other assets, and some things like that where you may not be able to keep all of it, but more than likely in a scenario like this, if you owed the 200 and you had, you know, $200,000 of equity in there, you could file a Chapter 13, which is a reorganization bankruptcy where you are now on somewhere between a three-year and a five-year plan making payments to your creditors. And there's some advantages to a Chapter 13 bankruptcy as far as your ability to qualify for a mortgage loan sooner. Uh, you can protect more of your equity and you can actually take some of your secured debt and actually reduce the interest rate that you might be paying on that. So just be aware, I'm not going to get into the second part of this on how this applies with mortgage loans and how to, how to kind of strategize. And we're not teaching anybody here that's anything unethical or immoral, uh, not even fattening, but we're going to just teach some things here on how to understand how to position yourself because if, when you go and meet with an attorney, He's going to look at things in the vacuum of the law. This is what's best for you based on the law. Well, you might find yourself in a position where, you know, you might want to sell this house, get into another home. Well, your bankruptcy attorney is not going to lend you money to buy your next house. The lender is. So it helps if you've got a lender that has done hundreds of loans for people that are have been either in a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, come out of a Chapter 7, and understands just enough, just, just this little sliver of pie out of bankruptcy law, on how the lending side looks at this and how to leverage it to your advantage so that A, you don't lose this house, but you put yourself in a position to be able to get into another home and keep this cash. So hopefully that's been helpful for you today. Check in, we're going to have parts probably two and three on this as well. But thanks for coming to thecreditjungle.com today. This is George Anderson, and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day.